In the last video, I was cutting out this acorn tray and I was showing you how we had a really bad vertical segmented uh, profile line going around the outside and I showed you how to get rid of that by converting all of the line segments to circular arcs. Now, looking at this project, if you look at this sidewall again, there was another problem that I didn't address in that video and that is the horizontal lines that you see going along the edge. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get rid of those on your prod project and how to ensure that you get a nice smooth finish on all of your CNC projects with profile cuts. Before we get started, if you like this video, please hit the like button below. And if you'd like to see more videos and be notified as soon as we post a new one on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button below. So the first thing we're going to do here is let's, let's take a look at the tool path that we're going to do. Now, we're going to set up a three quarter inch pad, cut depth on this. That's the thickness of my material. And with the end mill that I have, we're setting up at 150 thousandths pass depth. So that's going to calculate out to five passes that it's going to take to, to actually make this project. Now I'm going to go ahead and quickly just uh, calculate this. I want to show you what, what we see here. So see these blue lines? Each of these blue lines represents a pa one pass depth. So these lines would represent or correspond to the lines that are on the, uh, the outside edge of that project from the acorn tray. So you can see as it, as it goes around and it's cutting, I'm doing 0.15 inches per pass. Okay, so each, each time it makes a, a perimeter around, it's going to step down and it's going to do that five times to cut out this entire project. Okay, now each time it does that, you end up with a horizontal line on the outside edge. Now that line could be caused by a few things. Uh, you could have a mechanical problem with your machine where something in your gantry is loose and that side loading of the end mill is causing the uh, line to appear on the perimeter. So that's one thing to take a look at. Another is maybe your material is not secured uh, strongly to the machine. That, that could be another. Your uh, spindle could not be trammed properly. And if your end mill is coming in at a slight angle, you'll also get a line there. So those particular things are, you know, some mechanical things you want to check out to make sure that the problem is it's not mechanical and uh, that by just making a software fix here that we're not band-aiding an underlying problem, okay? Now, even if that's the case, there, there is a way to, to make it better. And if your machine is set up perfectly and you've got no issues, then you know th this is a way to guarantee that you have smooth edges all the time. So we're going to go back to that same tool path here. And we are going to go ahead now and click on Do Separate Last Pass. And I normally, for most desktop CNC machines, when cutting soft plastic or wood, uh, 15 thousandths is usually what I set for an allowance. All right, so now let me explain what that means. So we go back here to, to 2D preview. Now I drew a separate vector here to illustrate this. So this first vector is represents the finished cut size of this project. So this is what your, your finished uh, vector, that's where we want the end mill to cut to. This second vector right here is actually 15 thousandths away from this, uh, the final vector. Now what's going to happen here is we've got five passes. We're going to do a separate last pass. So the first four passes are actually going to cut. Let me uh, draw a circle here to represent an end mill. Now the, the first four passes are going to cut at this line. Okay, 15 thousandths away from the finished vector. The last pass, the end mill is going to come in and it's going to cut the remaining material on the bottom, but it's also going to take 15 thousandths of material away from the outside edge and it's going to cut along this line. So we're cutting two different ways uh, when we make that last pass. We're cutting the remaining material off the bottom and then we're running the entire cut height of this end mill along this vector. And basically what we're going to do is we're smoothing out all the previous cuts that we had. So if there is a line, they're all going to disappear because this end mill is, is basically going to come along and it's going to remove that 15 thousandths from the edge and that's going to take care of that problem. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. One, 
15 thousandths is what I recommend for most desktop machines with wood. Now your machine may be different depending on the spindle you're using, how rigid your machine is. Uh, there's, there's a lot of factors that could play into that. So maybe you want to start with five thousandths at, at first and then gradually increase it and, and make sure that your machine is going to be capable of it. The more important thing to be careful of is that you have to be sure that the end mill that you're using has a flute cut height that is greater than the thickness of the material that you're cutting. Okay. If your end mill is a half inch cut height and your material is three quarters of an inch thick, you could program this, but you're not going to, it's not going to work with, because what's going to happen is a quarter inch of your end mill is actually going to rub along the material and it's going to, it can cause burning. It can cause extra stress on your, uh, your machine. Uh, it could cause you to lose steps. It, it, there's a lot of bad things that get, could potentially happen when you do that. So you absolutely have to make sure that your cut height on your end mill is greater than the thickness of your material. Now, if your material is three quarters of an inch thick and your cut height on your end mill is three quarters of an inch thick, in my opinion, I still would not use that end mill. I think it's too, there's too much chance. If you even have so much as a couple thousands, you're, you're going to end up rubbing and that's going to be a problem. So I like to make sure that my end mill is at least a 16th of an inch uh, greater cut height than my material. And that also allows me a couple thousands to cut into my spoil board. So that's what I recommend doing on that. If you do this and you use this separate last pass setting, you're going to be fine. Your edges are going to be smooth all the time. It's very, very simple. Vetric takes care of all the G code, no issues. Uh, if you have any questions, Please let me know on this in the comments below.